去る11月17日日光カモスキがアンカレッジで UFO を目撃したそしてその事実が1ヶ月後共同通信により新聞各紙に発表された What I'm about to tell you is about an event that never happened. For an event that never happened, FAA official John Callahan certainly has a lot of evidence. They brought the voice tapes. He kept audio recordings between the cockpit and the tower as the incident unfolded. He has 30 minutes of taped radar that confirms the UFO, a chart that documents all the objects in the 747's flight path. And the official FAA report. Event that never happened. According to Callahan, all of this was presented to the CIA in a private meeting. When the pilot first reported the UFO, he described it as a huge ball with lights running around it. He said it was about four times bigger than the 747 he was riding. And remember, the 747 has an elevator. And he's looking out the window and he sees something that's four times the size of his aircraft. What you're about to see and hear. Are excerpts from the actual radar and cockpit conversations as the incident unfolded. So at one time he says it's over here at 12 o'clock and eight miles, and when the、uh, antenna goes by, we see a target there. Ten seconds later, it is now behind him, six, seven miles behind him. So it's going from from eight miles out here to six or seven miles back here, really in only five or six seconds. When I went back to headquarters, I gave Admiral England a quick briefing and showed him the video. He set up a briefing with the President Reagan's scientific staff. He told me my function was to hand this operation off to those people.、And、those people ended up being the CIA, the President's group, a bunch of grunts、uh, that came to the meeting. The CIA said to all the people there, "This event never happened. We were never here, and you're all sworn to secrecy. We are confiscating all this data." And they did. They took everything that was in the room. In those days, when you printed out something from the computer, fortunately, he kept copies of everything back in his office. That's the end of my speech. Who are you going to believe? Your lying eyes, or the government? And, well, how do you feel about your husband coming coming forward? Well, I think that that's John.、Uh, John is comfortable in what he says and what he does, and that if he what he sees, he will tell what he sees. And I don't think anybody is going to tell him that he can't. And I'm proud of him. I think he does a good job, and he's telling the world what he should know. It happened on the night of November 17th, 1986, 35,000 feet over Alaska. A pilot from Japan Airlines reported seeing a UFO. Two times bigger than an aircraft carrier, flying dangerously close to his plane. He alerted air traffic control. This is the actual tape of their conversation that night. That is firm. We do not have anybody up there right now.、Uh, can you give me the position of primary you're receiving? The pilot tracked the enormous UFO for 10 minutes, and then it vanished into the night stars. Shaken, the pilot completed his scheduled flight, only to learn that he was grounded. Dr. Richard Haynes, a retired NASA scientist who documents these sightings, helps pilots fight back. He defended the Japan Airlines pilot. 
Captain Terucci followed the book. He did everything by the book. He reported the phenomenon, which were multiple objects, by the way, not just one. Uh, he uh, kept the airplane in control at all times. He had multiple eyewitnesses in the cockpit. And even at that, he lost his flying status. The chief medical officer for Japan Airlines told me Captain Terucci was asked to uh, stop his flying duties because uh, the airline did not want to have um, pilots flying their airplanes who were seeing visual illusions. Even the FAA did not dispute Captain Terucci's claims because air traffic control had confirmed the UFO on radar. I'm picking up a, uh, a hit on the radar, approximately five miles in trail, your six o'clock position, do you concur? They were very rational at the time when they landed at the airport. There was no appearance of any kind of drug or alcohol abuse or anything like that. They're uh, very sincere about their situation and their descriptions. And uh, basically, we have no reason to doubt them with regard to what it is they say they saw. But it was Dr. Haynes' extensive database of similar cases that helped Harucci get his job back. I went to bat for him, and I persuaded them, I think, that Captain Terucci is not all that unusual because of all these other cases that I have. Second, that the objects he saw are not all that unusual, as bizarre as they seem to be to most people. And third, he's a good pilot. 